Hello everyone. Today in this video I am going to explain to you about the HTML structure because when you do automation through any tool you need to inspect elements on the page so that you can perform actions on the elements right so it is important to understand the HTML structure of the website so we start with a very common one let's say we talk about google.com and if i collapse everything and see here that the first line that we have here you can ignore it for the time being and let's say we talk about this html part so it begins with html and then it ends with html tag and inside the html we have head and body for the time being you can ignore all the attributes that you see here in the html or in the body tags so for now you can just assume that we have a blank html tag and blank head and body tags right now you notice one thing that when i mouse over to body tag it highlights everything on the page so that means all the elements that are visible on the page reside inside the body tag so on the similar lines i am creating a new html page so i have written the html beginning tag and the ending tag for html that has a slash in front of html so i have this html tag now i need to add head and body tags okay so i go back here and inside the html i put a tab and then write head tag so this is beginning tag and then this is ending tag for head right similarly i can add body tag start and end of it now all the things that we need to write inside the page that we want to see on the page we would be writing those elements inside the body so for now i'm just saving this on my hard drive and then i'll be opening it in the browser so that i can show you parallelly while developing or while adding components onto this page for timing you can see here the file name comes on the top but for the google one you see some elements on the page and the title says it is google now if we go to head of that you will see a tag that is title and inside that it says google so here is actually that title coming from and you can see here if i go inside this editor edit it and then make it something else and you will see the new title for google now this is only on my local because the page was loaded from server to my local which is the client and then i modified the code in my browser itself now that code is on the client side only if i refresh the page you would again see what title google has set on their page right so for our page what we can do is we can put a title inside the head so i add a tag title and then its ending tag and then inside this i can put my title let's say i put my name here now if you save the page and then refresh the browser you would see the title as kamal gidhar okay so this is how we can set the title of the page okay now we also see some other tags and some other information in the head like meta tags we also see some script tags okay so for the time being you can ignore these because for automation the most important thing for us would be the elements present inside the body so now let us see what elements do we have in the body of google.com so you can see first two elements are styling so you can ignore these for now then we have a division then we have a text area we also have some script tags let us also check on microsoft website so they have html head with so many attributes and if you expand the body you would see inside the body there is a division which is here then we also have few more divisions inside the divisions we also see some script tags all right so more or less you have seen that we have divisions playing major role in the structure of the html page and you can randomly check for any other website for example amazon.com or any other website of your choice and see the structure now let us have a look at the other tags that we generally would be seeing while automating any kind of website so first of all we talk about anchor tag so it has 
a as a tag name and then we can put any text over there i refresh it and you see the same text on the page right let's try to add few more anchor tags one after other and see how they appear on the page so these appear like this now let's say we want to add some spaces between all these tags so we can use nbsb this adds one space between these and if you want to add multiple spaces you just need to copy and paste and you would see some spacing between the two okay so this is not the right way let's say you want to add a new line in between these tags so that for that you can use br tag okay and it appears like this these anchor tags are primarily used for the hyperlinks or you can say the links where we can give the reference of the website we want to refer and when user clicks on this text it would redirect to that page for plain text we generally use span tags so you can type a message here and then refresh and it appears like the same way we were seeing for anchor tags remember that in anchor tags we have not provided the links as of now so more or less these are looking like same now we talk about paragraph tag so it has the name as just p okay and then if you enter any text it appears like this so paragraph add extra spacing from the last element or the next element and if you add multiple paragraphs you would see that they are having some spacing in between and generally paragraphs have uh, multi-line text uh, so that they appear as a paragraph all right so next we are going to add a table so table has tag name as table and this is the beginning tag this is the ending tag of the table and a table has multiple rows and columns okay so first i am going to insert rows they also have body uh, or you can say t body that we are not seeing here right now and also some header tags like th okay for now i am just covering trs and tds so you can see here i added three tr tags basically these are table rows okay and they appear one after other right one two three appear one after other reason is because it is not having any columns okay so i need to insert columns between the rows so let's say the first row is having one column only so td and then i add a value in that column as one similarly i copy and paste for the other rows as well and i just change the values now if i refresh i see three different rows basically here and if i make the border equals one this is one of the attributes that i'm giving here now i can see the structure of the table all right so this is table having three rows and one column similarly if you want to add multiple columns you just need to have those td blocks in that table row okay so for all the rows i am adding the same number of columns so you can see it is a three by three table okay this border equals one is actually the width of the border you can change it to two three four and that would increase the width of the border right now we have seen one attribute here for the table similarly i talked about links in the anchor right so that is also like an attribute of this anchor tag all right so let us try to give some attributes here first of all i am not giving the link i'm just talking about the very common attribute that is id this id is a unique number or a name given to an element on the page by which we can locate it easily right remember that this is the best technique to locate element on the page and while automation you would be picking up elements by id if they have the id present okay it is not mandatory that every element has id but uh, if it is provided then it is the best way or the recommended way to pick element using id and then perform action right so you can see here there are two elements and we can check in the browser itself that it appears like this and if i try to use css selectors here so i can see here it appears like this and it says that one element found okay 
CSS selector if you want to go in detail I have a separate tutorial for that and in fact for XPath as well for now just do not go inside that just see that this is ID and this appears like same in the browser itself okay so we have given one attribute which is ID similarly we can give ID to span paragraph table and all the elements of the body right not only ID but yes there are other uh, properties as well that we can give to these elements like the class name like href I talked about which is for hyperlink right and also like name there are other different attributes possible okay so now let us jump on to the hyperlink part so for that anchor element I'm giving href equals https google.com right so the string value would always be in double quotes okay and you can see here if I click on that link it takes me to google.com right this way this element becomes a link text the next very common type of element that you see on all your website is image okay so image has IMG as a tag name and you need to give an attribute which is SRC which is the source of that image and you need to give the path of the image file that you have with respect to your project folder okay so right now I am saying that it is present in the current directory and this image actually does not exist so it should give me a broken image you can see on the page it shows me as a broken image so first of all what I do is I go to my folder where I kept this HTML file and then I create a BMP image for example this image can be JPEG image or PNG image or any other file type but for now I'm just using JPEG okay so I just edit it and then I just change it to let's say a simple black box okay and just save it now the file name is 1.bmp right so I change it to 1.bmp all right let us save it and uh, uh, refresh the page it still appears as broken we need to remove this slash okay so the image appears here all right now let us see how lists are being displayed on the page list generally you see some bullet points on the page for text or maybe something else so these are actually unordered list the unordered list tag is ul and inside that unordered list you need to have multiple list elements right which are list items actually right so they have the name li so these have let's say values as 1 2 3 and 4 right so we have a list of elements here and if we refresh here it appears like this with a bullet sign in front of them okay so this is an unordered list you would also see this kind of thing very frequently on the websites that you are going to automate now let us try to add a drop down box or you can say a combo box on the page so for a combo box you need to have a select tag all right so select and then end of this select and inside that we have different option tags right so option like this and if we copy and paste to show multiple items in the drop down so we can have multiple option tags and inside that we can give the text that we want to display all right so one two three four like this okay right so now we refresh and we see here it appears like a drop down list now you see the anchor tag that we have uh, which is the next element just appearing very next to it so I add a new line tag or a few new line tags let's say or BR tags so that they appear with a spacing between these two elements so that they have some spacing between them but this is not the right way how are we going to structure our complete page using these BR tags or NBSP to keep the spacing intact so that's why we do not follow this kind of coding practice while 
building a HTML page. So that is where the role of divisions come into picture. So if I surround my this select drop down inside a division and let's say re remaining other items inside another division. Now you can say your entire page is made up of two divisions where this select tag is in one division and rest all of the elements are present inside another division, right? Now this structure can go up to any level. You can have one division inside another division and like that. And what is the benefit of division? You can see here that in the division we can give styling that I want to have top margin of this many pixel or left margin of these many pixels so that you need not use those BRs and NBSP to maintain the spacing. Okay, that is the advantage of using divisions that you can keep the spaces using the styling properties. Alright, so let us now inspect some random websites. For example, let's say we go to Expedia.com and let us check the HTML code for this website. Okay, so I have opened developer tools and let's say I move it to the right and then I go to elements. Now you can see very clearly it also follows the same structure that it has HTML, head, body and inside the head we have title which appears on the page as the page title and then we have some meta tags and some scripts and some styling as well uh, and then if I collapse this head and go inside the body you would see that we have divisions we ha where we have the id given like div id equals app then we also have some scripts inside and then we have one division inside another division and this makes up the entire page okay now you must be getting familiar with the html structure now is the time that you check at least four to five websites of your own choice and then check how they have placed different items on their pages all right so that is all about the html overview i have not covered the entire html concepts here i have just given you an overview that how elements are placed on a html and how you actually need to read through these attributes and html tags all right i believe that this would be helpful for you while scanning the elements in the HTML and then picking up the properties right to find the unique properties or to determine XPath or CSS selectors you need to go through the other tutorials that I have already posted all right thank you very much we'll see you in the next tutorial